Welcome to another exciting episode of the Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Goy. And I'm Mr. Magazine. And contrary to what you might believe from having gone backstage, this is not our first video. Um, Mr. Magazine was working the controls today and not ready for prime time. No. Uh, that being said, Mr. Magazine uh, brought up a good topic that we're going to talk about today. Uh, something that it's probably a little late in 2023 to work on. But you definitely can work on it uh, coming up in the next couple of months, next few months. Yeah. And why don't you tell us what you said, Mr. Magazine? Well, I started by asking Paperboy a question because I don't do the estate sales. I don't do the church sales and garage sales and all that stuff there. But he does. So I said, hey, is it harder finding stuff in the winter? Obviously, because the weather. And he goes, well, absolutely. I said, well, we got to talk about how you can stock up ahead of time and not have to worry about, hey, where am I going to get the next deal? What am I going to buy when? If you're well-stocked like we are, you never have that problem. Well, and one thing was years ago when I first started out, 2002, 2003, uh, right about then, it was always a lament. Now, back then, public auctions were a big thing in Rochester. Um, there were three or four auction houses that would regularly hold auctions, and almost every weekend you were able to go to an auction and buy stuff. However, you tended to find out, of course, there was not much, and it's the same thing goes with the state sales. There's not much going on around Christmas week and all that. Uh, everybody has, the auction houses all had a big New Year's auction, mm -hmm. of course. Yep. And then, you know, it was kind of slow up through mid-February. Uh, and the reason why is because we're in the Northeast. And I know you've gone to a couple of auctions with me throughout the years back in the day where it was bitterly cold oh, yeah. and it was absolutely terrible. So they tried to push the auctions off as long as they could. Um, well, I don't think they're getting big, big crowds either. You know, so. Oh, you'd be surprised. Yeah, no, they not. actually would get the people there. Um, you know, but then again, everybody was you know in a house when, when they were doing the indoor parts and stomping around with, with ice and snow and dirt and all that kind of stuff too. And of course the house has to be sold afterwards. Yeah. It was a nightmare. Um, but inevitably, what would happen would be when, when things opened up in April, prices were insane. Um, and the reason why would be all of the dealers that would be doing the flea markets and all that stuff, yeah. they would need product. So they would overpay on stuff. And I remember a local Joe who watches our show regularly, uh, shout out to you, he um he and I used to lament all the time, there's just nothing out there. And when there is something out there, the prices are going absolutely insane. Yeah. Um, so March, April, the flea markets haven't really opened yet. The garage sales haven't started up here in the Northeast. And when you do find something or other, it's well attended and a lot of people are, are paying too much for stuff. Uh, then, then fast forward to August, September, October. Yeah. There's enough shows. There's enough stuff out there. You can buy to your heart's content. Yeah. Um, again, as Mr. Magazine said, we don't have that issue. Right. Uh, Mr. Magazine sources a different way than I do, uh, but I don't have that issue at that part as well because if I decided I'm taking all of 2024 off buying, yeah, I think I'd still be okay. Yeah. I, well. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think so. But that's from years and years and years of doing this as well. And always being uh, ready, willing, and able to pull the trigger on a deal, which is which is what you have to do. Um, and I think a lot of people, a lot of people lament death piles and they say how terrible they are. Yeah. But I, I feel that a few people came around uh, because of the pandemic when sourcing was slim, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden there were people out there running out of things to buy or to sell because yeah. sales were good but they weren't able to replenish their stock. They weren't able to get very much in the way of new product. Um, I was, I didn't have any problems. <laughs> and I don't believe Mr. Magazine had any problems either as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other argument that people will make about that piles, and, and they're not incorrect, uh, they say you've got all this money tied up. And, and that is absolutely true. You do have all this money tied up. The flip side of that is if you're paying pennies on a dollar. Exactly, you can afford that. And, and the second part of that is, what else would you be doing with the money? Um, I can't speak for you, Mr. Magazine, but I've never turned down a deal for lack of funds because I bought a different deal. I did one time and I regret it. Well, there you go. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're never going to happen again. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it was a better day. I passed on 
the more expensive deal, the bigger deal was out of state. And uh, I took a, a toy deal, which I paid a higher percentage, some less profit. And with this other with, deal with the magazines and books, I could have paid pennies on the dollar. It would have been more money, but worth a, 10 times more, you know. And it's one of those things, you know. Went for the easy short buck instead of the, you know, long, long tail buck. So hmm. there you go. Um, you know, the deals that I do tend to be, I mean, the high end deal that I do is a couple of thousand dollars. And I, I don't want to put anybody down by any means whatsoever uh, if you're not in the same boat I am. I've been working for 33 years. I better be able to come up with two thousand dollars. <laughs> I just better. Um, <laughs> if I don't, well, if I don't, then I shouldn't be retiring sometime very soon. Let's put it that That's way. Um, so I can always float another deal the size of the deals that I get. Now, obviously, mm -hmm. a, a quarter of a million dollar deal comes along. It's a different story. Um, <clears throat> the flip side of that, of course, is as a one man band, I would be hard pressed to process through a quarter of a million dollar deal. Yeah. Um, if it were two items, I'd be worried about the, the the risk involved. And if it were 250,000 items, I don't have quite the room for it. So, but hopefully that helps you a little bit. It is it is a good idea to buy when you find the stuff and, and stock up. And again, a lot of other people will tell you something different uh, from, from us having done it for years and years and years. We both will buy regardless of how much stuff we have, uh, as long as the deal is right. Because again, it's all profit that you're getting. And if I have my money sitting in the bank at 5%, yeah, great, wonderful. I'd rather have my money sitting here when I'm paying five cents on a dollar. Me, um, you both. When you, when you get down to it, because all I really need is the time to get the stuff listed, and I, I putter away and get it up anyway as it is now. So hopefully that helps you a little bit. Do comment down below your, your thoughts about that, and uh, do hit the like button, and we will see you next video. All right, take care. Bye-bye.